What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to work on adding WireGuard to our home lab so we can always have access to it no matter where we are. So if you're not familiar, WireGuard is a VPN and we can host it ourselves using Docker. And so we'll host the WireGuard server on the Docker and then you can install the client on your phone or any other devices you might have that you want to run it to. And you can set it so you will always have access to your home lab by using a VPN to connect back to it. So let's get started. So we're gonna come over here to start off and we're gonna go into our Portainer and Docker environment. So if you don't have Portainer and Docker installed, go back a few videos ago and I have a video that goes over how to install and set everything up. Uh, I'm in the my mini server, so this is the mini PC that we've been working off of and I have a couple containers in here you can see. So we're gonna come right over to App Templates and I have Nova Spirit's App Template in here and I recommend using his because everything's set up perfectly so you can just deploy it and be done with. So we're going to search for WireGuard server and we're going to run the server on this end and then we'll install the clients on another machine when we're ready. But we're going to click on the WireGuard server app template and we're going to come over here and there are a few settings we do need to change. So your WireGuard host is your public IP or if you have a DDNS. Uh, I'm not going to change mine because I don't want everybody to know my public IP. But you would either put your public IP address here which you can find online by searching what is my IP or if you do have a DDNS you could put it here. You're going to change the password, so we're going to change it to password for now. And there are ports that are needed, so WireGuard by default uses 51820. You can change this if you want. I'm going to leave it for this video, but you do need to open up uh, the ports on your firewall. So, if you're not familiar, just look up a quick guide for your router, and there'll be a little walkthrough of how to open up ports. It's really simple, you just got to go into your firewall settings and open the port. From there we can change our DNS, so I'm going to change it because I host my own DNS server. So I'm just going to use my gateway. You can change your name and scheme for your VPN. This is a pretty standard one, so we're going to leave that. And for WireGuard allowed addresses, we're just going to change this so it uses our internal network range. So we're going to change that. So this is my scheme. So you probably most likely run something similar. Uh, some of your numbers over here might be different, but you most likely run a 192.168 and you probably have a slash 24 for your internal network. You can find this info on your router if you look at it. So from here, we're all set. So this actually gets installed as a stack and Portainer will do that for us. So we're gonna let this install. So now that it's all installed, we can see everything's re green, it's running, and we have our ports open up for it, so we are good. So if we come over here, we can actually click on it and it's gonna open up a little web browser. So now you might get this issue sometimes, so we're going to show you how to fix that real quick. So if we come into environments, local, and we're going to change the public IP so it matches up with the machine. So this is 192.168.50.19. I think I might have covered this before, but this happens sometimes by default when you set up the portainer environment. You need to add the public IP for the machine. It's not your actual public IP for your network, but the machine's IP. So we're going to update that. Now if I refresh this, uh, we're going to close that out. So now if I come back over to containers and I open the port, you see now it has the right address so it hits the page. So this is going to be your password that you used when you configured it. And I'm not going to save that. And now here we are in WireGuard. So we can add a new client. I'll do Carmine. And now we have a bunch of different things. So we can either turn it on or off. So if you have the client and you want to disable it, you could do that or you could turn it back on. So now you can either use the QR code. So if you want to put it on your phone, you could put the QR code on your phone or you can download the client. So this is the config file or you could delete it and you can of course add new ones. So if you want to install this on another computer, you could download the config file and go from there. So let's say I want to download WireGuard onto this machine. So I'll just go onto WireGuard get the download for the client and I'm using a Windows machine we'll run the install real quick it's a quick install it's gonna run it when this is all done I'll be right back so let's wait for that alright now that WireGuard's all set up we can actually import tunnels from a file so I'm gonna close out that page and I'm gonna download a config so you see now I have my carmine.conf so that's my file I'm gonna open this up and let's see we're coming to downloads and here's my that and I can just drag it right in well maybe not alright let's import tunnels from file come to downloads I'll grab that 
and here we are you see now it has my configuration file and everything like that so I'm not gonna actually be able to connect because I didn't configure with my public IP so we could actually come in here and I'll do this so it can so this is your actual config file so if you ever had to change anything you want to change your DNS or you want to change your address and you can do it right here so your endpoints where it's actually trying to hit so I'll put in my router just so it can connect but if I type the address right only one. So I'll save that when we activate it should connect and there you go so now you can see down here WireGuard has been activated so I'm going to deactivate it again so remember my endpoint I made my router just for the example but yours is going to be your public facing address or your DDNS service that you use that's connected back to your public facing IP address if you don't have it like if you like this is my internal scheme so if I try to use this external to my network I'm not gonna be able to connect and you're gonna be all bummed out when you try to access your server again so make sure you either put your DDNS or your external face and IP address so I'm gonna cancel that out uh, it's a simple video you could also download the QR code and put it on your phone so WireGuard does have an app and you could put the, the QR code into there and it'll make it so you can connect right in I've used it a couple times so I could access my 3D printer server and it's a great thing, it works perfectly. So I know this was a quick video, but I just wanted to go over how to install WireGuard as the Docker container on your new home lab server. So having a VPN is a really great tool because it makes it so you always have access back to your home lab no matter where you are. So if you have it on your phone, you could always pop in real quick and you could access one of the pages. You can see what's going on. If you have Pi-hole, you could access Pi-hole through your internet off your phone so you could tunnel back into your house and you could access your pie hole wherever you are which is a nice little trick uh, if you have other services that run your house that you want to access it's always nice because you could reach them off your phone or if you have another laptop or whatever you want to use outside your network you always have it you also have encrypted traffic back to your house if that's what you want to run so i know this was a quick video but i think this is a great tool to have uh, having a vpn is very convenient i use one every day so i could access my servers back in my house and work on and tinker with them as I need. So this was a shorter video, but we're going to keep building off of it. So we needed the VPN for one of our other projects that we're working on. So stick around and I have another video coming up soon that we're going to be building off of this with. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.